questions now. Yep, yep. Uh, let's go through. Hello folks, hello folks, welcome back to the Twitch channel here for the United Sim Sports Network. Uh, hope everyone's having a great day, a great Sunday. It's Mother's Day, so make sure you tell your mother, happy Mother's Day for your peoples here in the United Sim Football Association. And it is time for our May edition of the questions and answers portion of of our setup man i cannot wait to get this one started i've seen a lot of good questions in there and you know we got the admins up in here doing their thug fizzle we got casey colby in caboose with us again say some love to your people folks how's it going everyone second one glad to be doing this again Ooh. gotta do it every month here just to give you a little breakdown of what's been going on with the league and the whole shebang with the United Sim Sports uh, setup. So glad to have you here once again with this. I'm going to get the game rolling in just a little bit, just so you can kind of see what we're while we're going over everything. But uh, no better point than to get started. You can uh, set up that first question. Uh, who would like to read it out? Uh, no, we're going to go over the uh, coming changes first, and then we're going to get to the Q and A afterwards. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot about that. But you know, I'm too, I'm too hyped right now. I'm on Twitch again. You know, my mind racing. But now, let's start with uh, what you got for us, uh, Big Boss Man. So, right now, a lot of the changes that are coming in are going to be happening to the CSFA, uh, as well as um, a few overarching changes to league league structure. Um, so let's let's dive in just to the specific CSFA changes really quick uh, with the current growth surge that we are having um we are expanding the roster sizes of the collegiate teams to nine offensive players nine defensive players and one kicker punter um we are going to figure out scholarships i believe right now we've given out an additional oh, three yeah. mil and an additional 2m for the teams we'll have to figure out what those last two scholarships will end up being. Um, but 
for now, that that is going to be the max we can really realistically hit is nine offense, nine defense, one kicker. Um, if we have also uh, removed a couple stop gaps, um, if you leave the USA server right now, you're automatically deemed inactive. We will replace your player. Um, finally, if you don't update for two weeks now instead of three, uh, it used to be three weeks of not updating would classify you as inactive. Now it is two weeks um, just to try and keep up with the growth and keep spots available for people. Uh, if for some reason we are still full of people and we're getting more and more people, um, we have a couple ideas floating in the background. Uh, potentially bringing back Division 2, potentially uh, if we if that happens before the season even starts, uh, maybe expansion. It's not a for sure thing, and it's not something I really want to think about, because uh, I really don't want it to happen right now, <laughs> all things considered. Um, yeah. I'd, I'd like to grow what we have at the college level first, um, but if we have to expand, we've, we've got to expand. Um, gotta do what we gotta do, for sure. Now, the... What's coming up for the league is a schedule change. Uh, this has been mentioned a few times, I think. Uh, we are moving now towards one game a week per team. So, Wednesday, we will have two games on YouTube for the CSFA. On Thursday, we will have two games for the USFA on YouTube. Friday will be an off day. Saturday will be a CSFA primetime game on Twitch. And then Sunday will be the USFA primetime game on Twitch. Um, we don't have times for the weekend games quite yet. That's going to be stacks. Do you have uh, ideas on that? Um, it'll definitely be after work, of course. <laughs> but uh, thinking on times, I'll say no later than 8. No later than 8. But I should be able to get a little bit earlier than that, depending on when I get home, when I set everything up with the computer, all the good stuff before I go into it. And everything like that so i'll say right now we'll put it at a tentative seven for like start for start time on the twitch and then uh we'll kind of let it roll from there so that is that those are in eastern time as well correct uh yes that's eastern standard time yes uh so that'll be okay. uh so seven it'll be for uh pacific pacific it's so, so that uh, answer in the chat. Uh, yes, they will be uploaded to YouTube. I already have my uh, Twitch video downloader on my computer. It's on my taskbar. So uh, whenever the um, the Twitch stream is done, I'm going to go ahead and download it and then upload it uh, just like I would any other video. So yeah, that'll be straight. Um, now, this expanded schedule will also mean that you know, now we have 14, 15 week seasons total. Because you got 12 weeks for. Yeah, let's have about 15 total weeks for just a full season. Um, which means we are going to be scaling down the TPE earning uh, to accommodate that. So now your weekly check ins starting tomorrow, Monday. Your weekly check-in will go down from 6 to 3. Sim attendances will go down from 2 apiece to 1 apiece for a total of max 3. And job pay will remain the same at 3 per job up to 2 jobs. So you will now have a maximum of 12 points per week that you can earn. Uh, and as... We're going to do some testing with this. We're going to kind of play it out by ear uh, and see how that's going to affect regression. Um, so th keep in mind that regression 
where that might get changed down the line if it would deem that it's not effective enough. Um, but, you know, just, just keep that in mind as we move forward. Um, let me see. Other changes, I think those are the, like the biggest ones. Um, USFA wise, uh, the oh conferences. Uh, we had a little bit of discussion on this, but they we're going to go east west with conferences. So we're going to have the Charlotte Royals, Pittsburgh Roughnecks, and the St. Louis Archers out in the east, and we're going to have the Huntington Beach Voyager, Voyagers, Arizona Rattlers, and Tacoma Eruption out in the west. Um, for right now, since there's only six teams, I don't foresee playoffs being division versus division. Um, it's just going to be the top four records still, which will still include both East and West. Yeah. Which, which is really important, I think, in a small league. Yeah. Um, so... As we grow, that might change, but for now, it's just going to be the top four records um, will advance in the playoffs, and then divisions will just serve as a an extra tiebreaker. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, is there anything else that I'm kind of missing here in terms of upcoming changes for Season 5 and the rest of the month? I mean, unless you want to talk about, like... Uh... Like the new people joining the ranks for like different essays and oh, GMs, yeah, but yeah. yes, 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 yes. So new, all you new people, all like fifty of you that I have processed in the last about <laughs> less than twenty four hours, maybe about. eighteen hours. Um, we we love that you're here. I, I love that you're here. We need some help. <laughs> um, we really need some more people to help update teams. We need some people to, you know, if we're going to keep growing like this, and I would love to keep growing like this, we're going to need some more essays. We're going to need some more GMs. And we're definitely 100% going to need another simmer or two. So if you're interested, uh, we, you know, just come reach out to one of us. We would like to have you on the team. Um, please, please, please. Uh, come help us out. Come support us. Uh, and we're going to do our best to support you. We'll definitely take care of you for sure. And uh, definitely on the... Well, the seven portion, I, I think I got a good piece on it on my side. But uh, definitely on that... Um, if you want to try the side for commentary as well, uh, that is also needed. Uh, and you can always message me whenever in regards to that. Uh, we definitely do some test runs. You see, I'm running a game right here. That's just, a, you know, with the base teams here. But, you know, we could just try some different things, see what you like. If you like more color commentary as opposed to play-by-play, -play, uh, we'll, we'll see what you're best at. And uh, let's see if we can make something happen, build some more... Uh, rapport and uh, some different voices uh, that will definitely help the league uh, get some more immersion. So, yeah. Oh. Uh, Colby, do you have anything on your end? Just another reminder that we will be uh, actually mandating the salary cap and team finance submissions this year for the first time. Um, no. And I said this in GM chat, but I want to put this out there as well. Uh, I set a goal for no team having a plus or minus greater than 200 points this season. I really want us to start taking a better, harder step toward parity. So let's let's head towards some of these questions that we got here uh, in the admin questions channel. If you guys want to get out on this, um, feel free in the admin questions channel in the Discord. Uh, just post your questions there. Also, it doesn't help. So, it also doesn't hurt on the Twitch chat as well. That algorithm good stuff. Does. too. Yeah. yeah, we'll yeah. reactions and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yep. 
so starting off, let's go Venom. Uh, what do you think of the USFA draft results favorite pick? Uh, I mean, honestly, with a with a draft this big, um, so many. <laughs> I, it, it was it was gonna be a good draft no matter what. Um, some good picks, I think. Dots and going at fifth was a pretty much a steal. Um, you know, James West going down into the second was a good pick. Um, you know, you get some of these. Per my personal favorite, Falco Demacchio, who just kind of came back out of nowhere uh, in the third round, is nice. If you can get cheese back, those picks at 319 and 420, those are going to be great picks. What is it? And the 25th, or sorry, the 24th pick is for St. Louis there, Herrick Denry, obviously, big, big steal. Um, so, yeah, there's a lot of good picks here. There's a lot of... Um, solid talent getting dispersed to the league, and I think it's really going to help out in terms of parity. You guys got any other thoughts on that? You you ran through a majority of the ones I was going to say. Um, those are all real, real good picks. Uh, I'm definitely interested in seeing what these quarterbacks are doing um, for Sean Bridges and James West, and I can't wait to see what they do in the big leagues as well. That's one game the first game, the first time these two teams meet is going to be uh, a fun ride for sure, and I'm definitely going to love doing commentary for that. So, look forward to see those two homies go at it. I mean, I I think there's a little too much nervousness about how they'll perform. They're both ahead of quarterbacks that have been in the league uh, for a while, and you know, one of them already has. A much better team around him than some of the other QBs. I I don't think they're going to to suffer at all. Right. Mm -mm. All right. So next up, we've got from Lane Frost. What team is going to make a big splash in in either either league this upcoming season? Um. Obviously, no team is going to make a splash in both simultaneously. So, I think USFA, Colby, you want to take a shot at that one first? Yeah, obviously last year we had two uh, dominant teams with HBV and St. Louis. Uh, following HBV uh, winning yet another ring, we saw them lose... Um, Sassafras, who was retired in, in order to protect uh, more of their, their other players. But that still resulted in them losing two IAs, which may not seem a lot, but they lost a strong active in two IAs and replaced nothing. Uh, they're they going to drop some, off hard. Same they did get some, the Sorry, this is, um, they did replace those IAs in free agency. How? Uh, free agency. They the they didn't get signed by Pittsburgh. We'll have to talk because that's still not supposed to be legal. Mm. We, we we told them if you don't protect a player, you cannot sign them in free agency. Oh, that's right. We did. Hmm. So, I don't want to mix that from Huntington Beach, but they did not replace any of their players. Some controversy already. I'd yeah. love to see it. <laughs> I totally forgot about that. No worries. But, um, let me see. So, uh, yeah, at any rate, I, yeah. even if they did replace those, they lost one huge active um, and got nothing to replace that. St. Louis, on the other hand, I would say lost only slightly more than HBV. But, I mean, look at their draft. Just, at, just in the first round, they had Bridges, Carter, and Bean. Um, so, you know, by the end of the first round, they've replaced as much as they've lost. Arguably, arguably more, to be honest. Uh, and then they picked up Evan Hunt in the second round. So, I, I think they're going to be just as strong as last year, because obviously some of their opponents uh, got stronger as well. But 
I hate to say a runaway season for STL, but I think they are easily the team to beat. Although there are several teams who I think can win one game over them in the playoffs, which is all that matters. Yep. Jack, you got any thoughts on that? Um, is it just USFA, or are we talking both sets? Just, for, for now, just, USFA. We will yeah. we will do CSFA though. Okay. Um, I'm interested in seeing what uh, uh Charlotte and Tacoma will be uh doing in regards to how they drafted. Um, definitely just like uh Caboose talked about earlier, picking up a guy like a Vic Dotson could help their offense get to the next level. We'll see if their uh, quarterback play improves a little bit better. Definitely can help their offense get a little bit more further. Their defense got a lot stronger as well, adding some pieces. Um, along with uh, what we said, along with uh, Charlotte, there was some uh, real solid pickups, both by A and in the draft, that I think can at least give them a solid chance to make or give them a chance to make the playoffs. It'll be tough because there's still half of the teams, you know, like uh, HBB and St. Louis still looking down, if you will, on the rest of the league. But I think that if they could get a few more, uh, a few good plays and a few good wins out of nowhere, maybe an upset or two. I mean, you never know what could happen. Uh, you know how the game of football is. All it takes is one real good day from a team, and uh, you come out on top. And uh, we've seen some crazy upsets since this league been in like in the factor, so I just can't wait to see uh, what those two teams do. And I also want to see what uh, Markham does uh, in regards to uh, the new quarterback on the block there for Charlotte. That's going to be interesting to see. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, my two teams to watch are going to be Arizona and Charlotte. Um, we, we all know about St. Louis. We all know about Huntington Beach. Um, the call was kind of been on the up and up, but Arizona only recently made their first playoff appearance in league history. Um, and they, in the draft, they really addressed some needs, I feel, um, with picks in Ada Montana and uh, Randall Hawkins, as well as adding some receiver depth uh, with Sir Lancelot. So I really feel like they they could have a stronger case to uh, maybe make maybe a potentially deeper run in the playoffs, uh, but also Charlotte after coming off of a year of nothing, uh, they've got some pieces. I'm not, I don't know if they I don't know if they make the playoffs, but it's definitely going to be interesting to see how that compares. I mean, I I feel like the team that showed up the biggest in the draft was Tacoma. Yeah. And when we talked about the biggest uh, draft steals, when you went down the list, how many of those were Tacoma picks? Uh, let's see. You know, uh, a couple, yeah. There's a <laughs> couple of them. They, they had Vic Dotson in the first. They had Moldy Cheese at okay. the end of the wow. third. Like, you go uh, down. To be fair, they did take Dude Kick Gonna Miss. It. Tarnishing what was otherwise... Near Wallace draft. draft. Yeah. Near Wallace. <laughs> Outside of that. But you I mean, give... to be fair, uh, ruining a fourth round pick is very recoverable, especially when you've got two steals above that. But, you know, um, and bear in mind, like, that, that's just the steals. That's not even the good picks. You know, they grabbed Isaiah Fowler, they grabbed Tank Falco. I mean, you could definitely call Tank Falco a steal. Yeah. yeah um, I, I am really looking forward to watching them. Yeah, because there's going to be. Go ahead. You know what they're going to do, and they grabbed pieces that fit that strategy. Yeah. And that's just a beautiful thing to see. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, there's definitely going to be a lot more to watch, a lot more excitement going on up there, um, rather than the normal squash of Huntington Beach or St. Louis versus everyone else. Uh, just not to cut you off, but uh, my player on this Miami team for the base players just got an interception. No I just want to say that. No one cares. No one cares. I just, just want to say no, that. Wait, both sides. When, when my <laughs> kicker made a field goal, because by the way, the, the Denver kicker, Kevin Colby, that is actually named after me. Oh, that's hilarious. I just chose by random. Um, should have played Baltimore. Oh, well. <laughs> Next game. But, uh, moving. Okay, now CSFA-wise... Um, 
you know, with so many teams that are just getting a complete makeover right now, it's really hard to say who's going to get where. Because right now, most of the league is a freshman. Yeah. Um, More than half. Yeah. The championship team was one of the hardest hit. Um, you can make a case that they were the hardest hit, although technically OSS, OCSU lost one more player. They weren't as strong a player, though, you know. Um, yeah, OCSU lost the amount, but uh, CHP lost the talent. And if you want to I, look I like am that. liking EAU since they're the kind of the only ones with both a proven QB and at least one competent receiver. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, obviously, I'm incredibly biased, but I think CHP will likely be back in the finals again and keeping that streak alive. Yeah, I feel like there's a handful of teams at this point, just because every almost everyone's got a blank slate. Um, so long as people earn, anyone could really make it. Um, I, I still say teams that have some solid seniors right now, like East Augusta, maybe a mile high, probably a Central Houston, have the upper hand. But if some of these young guys on, say, Orlando Tech or LGU or one of the many new faces on OZ State um, really rise to the occasion, it could be anyone's game. Hot take right here. One of the OG CSFA teams is going to lose, and they're not going to make the playoffs. I think OTEC will find their way into the playoffs. That's that's my hot take right there. Yeah, that's definitely doable. Uh, I could see LGU even potentially sneaking up there as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm not sure which team will fall, but if it was to choose between two, it will either be OCSU or... Uh, OCSU or Mile High. It'll be one of those. Yeah, there's... Just because I feel like they both lost starting quarterbacks, so now they're moving on to freshman quarterbacks. It's definitely possible. Mm -hmm. Gonna be interesting to see um, the new uh, school admins there. Uh, for Fowler, you see him in the chat. He's blowing it up right now, saying no tech. <laughs> and uh, also seeing Venom. Uh, move into that slide as well for Mile High, so it's going to be fun to see how they uh, work their new offense and defense. Yep. Um, all right. So, moving on, this is a great question from AW. Uh, Huntington Beach has been in every single USFA championship game so far. Do you see this as a good or bad thing for the league? Is it good to have a team that people will go out and try to beat, or is it too harmful potentially to league parity? Um, so obviously, we want the league to be competitive. Uh, that is our goal. We want every team to kind of have a chance. But at the same time, like there is an importance of having a distinction between a team that is championship caliber and a team that's rebuilding. Um, you know that that's you see that throughout the pros. You know you look at the Jacksonville Jaguars or the Kansas City Chiefs. Who do you think is going to win? Who do you take in that matchup? I'd say ninety nine percent of the time you take the Chiefs. You did that on purpose. Damn right. I did. <laughs> um, same could be said of the Jets or the you know the Lions. Like mm -hmm. there's just there's certain teams that are aren't as good at the moment. What we'd like to have is we want to have a process where those teams can build back up to relevance and be championship containers. Well, the, the once upon a time, you know, the, you know, the Patriots or the Chiefs of the leagues fall off uh, slowly but surely. And then they've got to go through the rebuild process as well. Or at least the retool. Um, I don't necessarily see it as harmful for a team to have a period of time where they're really good, so long as it's followed by a period of time where they're, you know, putting their roster back together. Or at least this early in assembly, there's just not time for those cycles mm -hmm. to, to have occurred, you know? Yeah. 
So, yeah, I'm, I think we're kind of beginning to see the beginning of that cycle for Huntington Beach, at least. Um, St. Louis has kind of pushed theirs off by making some decent trades. Mm-hmm. And when I say decent, I mean like fleecings. Yeah. But you know, that eventually salary cap for them will kick in and it's going to cause them to have to disperse their talent a little bit. Mm-hmm. You can honestly yeah, say Huntington scenario, Beach. I'm oh, sorry. Three, worst case scenario, three seasons from now, they're broke or losing talent. Yeah. Go ahead. I mean, they're, they're broke now, but... You can also uh, say, Hun- yeah, you can also say Huntington Beach is really just one of the top dogs due to circumstance or how the league was, um, and just and just looking at how like most leagues are, especially with leagues that don't have as many teams as its professional counterparts, it's it's going to look more glaring the less teams it is. Uh, so me personally, just like a crew said, I don't see it as a issue personally, and to be honest. I think every te- I think every league needs that team that everyone hates, mostly because they're so good in some way, shape, or form. Maybe that's just me, and maybe that's just because I know my my actual favorite team is like uh, not that great to say the least. I'll just keep it with that. Um, but yeah, I mean that's just kind of part of the process. I mean it's like we still got plenty of more time. Let's see how it is when it comes to season ten when we got. Some of these newer crop of players that came in, they're going to be cycling in by the time they get up to snuff. The guys that we have now are going to be either regressing or trying to fight for their lives to stay active and staying good. So they'll definitely uh, switch up to see who keeps the activity going. And then all these uh, questions about yeah. parity won't be even a factor, I don't think. Yeah. Um, oh, we just missed a field goal from 18. That sucks. Um, <laughs> that's really okay. sucks if you're on the outside and short. So, it's a, right, a Ron- really weird quirk of theirs, but oh well. Yeah. So, all right, Ronnie Shanahan asks, who do you think will win the United Bowl this season well, coming can, up? Can we go back to the last question real quick? Yeah, go ahead. Go for it. Sorry. Didn't mean to cut I you just off. want to say that it's, it's less about the fact that it's been the same team winning as to going into those games, how much of a chance do f- people feel they have? You know, a, a close game is more important than who wins it, I think. Mm-hmm. You know, it, and I, that's how I define a, an entertaining product. So for me, it's, it's about closer games. All right. No, no. Uh, no there is no preseason fowler. Um... So, Ronnie Shanahan asks, who do you think will win the United Bowl this season coming up? Do you think another team, like an underdog, could snag the United Bowl? Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, it's going to take some luck. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> but I, I could see Tacoma or Arizona potentially snagging it. Um, but realistically, I think St. Louis. I, I think with... Both finally being at a at pro level. Now I say pro level, I mean like dominant level <laughs> as a running back this year, and St. Louis losing their best run stopper. That's a matchup I'm really looking forward to seeing, and I can 100% see Arizona stealing that final game from St. Louis. Yeah, assuming we run the ball. <laughs> I, I I think that's gonna go up. Yeah. yeah, your carry's going to go up for sure. Zach, what do you think? Yeah, I'm I'm kind of on the Arizona train as well. Uh, Arizona, and if not Arizona, I'm thinking Tacoma as well. That could possibly find a way. They're the closest one in that level in regards to, like, right below, uh, right below the top two teams. And uh, we've seen, and we've seen less, and we've seen last season, uh, they took down Huntington Beach. They they found a way to get a victory against them. So it's not like it's impossible. It hasn't happened before. And and if you just want to look at the talent gap from last year to this year, Tacoma's closer to Huntington Beach than it was last season. So at this point, <laughs> at this point, it's just a matter of what's going to happen when uh, when we set these games up. 
And uh, yeah, that's going to be interesting to see. And, and for the record, I think Tacoma is slightly more talented than Arizona. I just think Arizona has a better matchup against St. Louis. Mm-hmm. I agree. You know? um, let's go to this one in Twitch chat really quick from Deltman. Sure. Um, who is the best player of all time in your mind and why? Uh, well, bias oh, or man. with bias? Uh, without bias. Okay. Um, I mean, that's not possible, but okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, shoot, that's a good one right there, actually. Um, Part of the issue is we haven't really... We've got a pretty small sample size right yeah. now, with only yeah. four seasons. Um... But I think that right. right now the greatest player we've had is probably Rebecca Monte. Yeah, yeah, she she was the one I was pulling up in the uh, career stats. By the way, shout out to Destillation. Mm-hmm. Um, she broke fifteen thousand career yards this season. <laughs> now has one hundred and twenty eight t- passing touchdowns to only thirty six interceptions. And a, a career quarterback rating over 100. I mean, those are great numbers. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. What are you thinking on the defensive uh, side of the ball? Defensive side? Say I don't know. I dare you. <laughs> Maybe, honestly. Um, it's, it's, that's kind of a tough question because a lot of our defensive players are – two, maybe three seasons in. There, there just hasn't been a whole lot of time for them to develop. Uh, guys that come off the page just right. off the jump, Kayla Montaigne, maybe a Preston Dotson, maybe an Arn Jacobson, maybe. Um, don't, don't forget Dexter Jackson maybe. either with all those touchdowns. Yeah, Dexter Jackson. Potentially. Um, but there's a lot of uh Ifs, yeah, maybes. Uh, there just hasn't been enough of a sample size, I think. Come back to us with that question. Like, season 10 will probably have a better answer. See uh, Fowler in the chat there. He says uh, he's trying to start some controversy with his uh, wide receiver there. I saw. Uh, let's see how that goes. It's a bold strategy, Cotton. <laughs> uh... Yeah, he, he brought like 50 people into the league. Like, I think he can say what he wants. <laughs> he can say yeah, what he wants. <laughs> I'm not going to go against them. Uh, all right. So, from Kurtz, we've got uh, how much of an impact do you think that the rookies will make on their team and on the league as a whole? Uh, a lot. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. Great, great question. <laughs> great question. A lot. Uh, Rookie of the year is going to be ultra competitive for both sides of the ball. I think we're going to see some rookies potentially competing for MVP and also potentially offensive defensive player of the year. Um, we're going to, I think, these rookies are probably for some teams going to make or break their season. Mm hmm. Uh, especially someone like Pittsburgh, which is pretty much all rookies. Yeah. Um, their success rides upon their rookies. So, and I, I could see Pittsburgh finishing last. I could see Pittsburgh, if, if things go their way, making a playoff push. It, it really is is a huge variable rookies um it just depends on how how well they update how well they build and how well they can strategize after that uh last uh, prospect game i'm trying to see what's happened with the side end of the year word yeah there's it, no award is safe anymore. There's there's a lot more a lot more talent coming in to compete for those awards. Mm-hmm. Colby, you got anything? I mean, I I already kind of mentioned that I think both of the incoming quarterbacks um, will show that they're already ready. 
Mm-hmm. Um, I do think Bridges has a legitimate shot at QB of the year. Um, just due to the situation, you know. Um, I I think that with HBV losing Sassafras and with STL upgrading their pass defense, I think he'll have a genuine shot. Um, rookie of the year is going to be an amazing discussion. I'm really looking forward to that. Offense and defense, for sure. Yeah, I mean... Yep. All right. You ready to move on? Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, so, great question here from First Ray. Uh, what's the pro? Yeah. What's the progress like with the baseball league? Uh, for those of you who don't know that are watching, we are developing a baseball league, uh, the United Sim Baseball, and right now we're we're in testing. Um, we're getting things settings kind of put together. Um, you know, we're. Here. We're not quite at a spot where we can start releasing it or building teams yet, but uh, we're trying to build on Out of the Park 23, the new game that just came out. So finding all the issues that came out with it, tweaking them to make it a viewable product and a simmable product, uh, trying to find all those exploits that could potentially come into play so that way they don't. Um, just little things like that that need to be sorted out before you release. Um, that's where we're at. In terms of which teams will be representing the college side, uh, honestly, I believe personally, if it came to me, I've got two teams in mind. Um, and then the rest would be brand new. Mm-hmm. But we haven't officially decided anything yet. Yeah. Definitely going to be a fun sight to see for sure. I can't wait to get that started and uh, looking forward to seeing what happens on the second stage of United Sim Sports. And uh, of course, they're going to be posted here on Twitch as well. So, uh, along with YouTube. So. Can't wait to see uh, all the new players shine on the on the diamond. Yeah. Um, and then the last part of that question: anything in particular that users in this league can help with for the baseball league? Yes, take league jobs here. Yep. If you take league jobs here in the USFA, it gives us way more time to work on and figure out other things. Um, so, you know, if you want to take. Uh, commissioner or a you know simmer or a anything insert job role here uh, we we can use use that to free up ourselves for other things like the baseball league for example if there was a, a CSFA simmer and I would be USFA whatever works that will give me some more time to yeah. work on player builds or help on player builds, helping on getting the settings right, along with the people that already have their shout out to uh, the people already helping us out on that side. But, you know, that's just one of the ways. Like, like helping with the league that we got now is kind of paramount. So, just like you said in the beginning, mm-hmm. like the more help to take some uh, food off the collective plate, if you will, is, you might see it a lot quicker than expected. Um, and Kobe, unless you got anything else. No. Um, I mean, bear in mind, there's a lot of testing that's going to need to be done. There's so much we don't know about 23, um, mm-hmm. which I, I have, and I, I know I'm not the only one here who has it. Um, but, like, they're still kind of polishing it up, even though it's it's been sold. So... We we no, we no. didn't dive in yet because you know they they push a patch and like we have to start over anyways. We so. might be in a similar situation to how we are currently with Axis and they're just dropping updates as we're yeah. running the league and stuff. And then hopefully we can find some way to get a similar uh, situation like we are with Axis team. That'll be dope. 
Yeah, uh, I don't foresee that particularly happening, but it would be nice. Mm -hmm. um, and let's go to uh, Phantom is asking if he can use the same players he had before before he left the server. Now that he's back, uh, as long as they're not retired, it should be possible, right? If if they're not auto retired, yeah, uh, you'd have to find their names for me because I have no idea where they're at. But if you can figure out what their names are, uh, send them to me, and I'll go looking. Mm -hmm. Thing is, you know, you you should have a pretty sizable difference between TP in regards to your adversaries that's in the same year that you're created. But you'd yeah. more than likely still be in the same realm as some of the rookies or close to the rookies that came in. Only thing is, you'll be retiring quicker because obviously you've been in the league. So, or you're gonna get drafted faster because if uh, if he was a part of this upcoming draft class mm -hmm. and he was an inactive free agent, I I would auto retired all of them. Yep, yeah, I assumed he was like here in the beta portion and like moving into season one, so I was thinking he'll probably still be in the USFA. Maybe, but I'm not yeah. sure. I'm not sure where where this place could be. I, I don't even know where to look. <laughs> and yes, Valor, we're going to 2023. Uh, Yes, we, we will go to 2023 pretty much as soon as it comes out. Um, I don't know if there's too much debate about that. Mm -hmm. just, um, just like we're doing everything we can to move to that new axis. I cannot wait. Yep. Uh, that's, that's all the questions. Uh, unless you guys got any closing thoughts. I, I just want to say be ready for a great season in both USFA and CSFA. I think this is easily going to be the most competitive season we've had. Absolutely. Stax, you got anything else? Uh, can't think of anything off the top of my head, but uh, once again, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead and thank the homie Fowler just for bringing all these people in. It's fun seeing the chat rolling through on Discord with all these new people and helping them out, getting them on teams. I'm seeing a lot more activity in the locker rooms, which is amazing. And uh, mm -hmm. I, I, remember, I do remember getting one question a little bit earlier why um, why this league doesn't have, like, the actual, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, like, the locker rooms on the USFA oh, server. Yeah. Um, I think I already touched up on it, but it's a lot easier that way, not just for like the essays to make their own little path for uh, to help everyone but also on us the admins who see pretty much every channel <laughs> we don't need to see all those channels and all that stuff we can just click on to your to your school and then we can see pretty much everything it's a lot uh more streamlined that way and it could definitely uh get that role in there so that was kind of the answer to that but that's how that that's how that's I mean, that's pretty much it for me uh Look forward to call the new people uh, that's coming in under the games. Yeah, well, uh, it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a great season, and I think uh, there's a lot to be looking forward to. Remember that uh, the season will begin with the CSFA on Wednesday, May 18th. Uh, I will have these schedules probably posted up here within the next couple of days for the for the season five season. Um, but. Without further ado, I think that's just about it. Thank you all for coming out. Uh, and look forward to doing this again next month. Next month is coming soon. And we'll be well into the season at that point. So look forward to seeing what you do. And I'll go ahead and close it off here for the homies. Uh, appreciate all of you for stopping by, showing some love for us. And I'll go ahead and upload this to YouTube afterwards. So we'll see you then and see you back in the chat.